Hi there, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Tina from TinaHills.com and this video is about my very, very precious connection with the Nath Sampraday. So I am not uh, traditionally a part of Nath Sampraday as in I have not, uh, you know, joined that Sampraday or tradition, uh, that's the meaning of Sampraday, but the Nathas are very very close to me and it all started with when I was very young I went to Gonga Shagur Mela which happens very close to Calcutta and there I had uh, some very very interesting uh, conversations about the Natha and the Nath tradition and Gorakhnath and Mitsendra Nath and all of that and uh, that was when I was really really young with my mom and dad and then uh, around uh, in my very early 20s, I was at the Kumbh Mela and, uh, you know, I was there with uh, my uh, partner and my partner for 17 years. And we were together and we, we would just, you know, wake up in the morning and go and just shoot footage, meditate, be by the Ganges. And it was a very, very precious experience. And we managed to do that for two Mahakums. So now in this Mahakum, what happened is we would regularly try to meet up with the Ghoris, with the Vamachara Tantra, Tantric people and all of that. And even the rain, as, you know, the Freemasons we met over there. And um, and they were doing some really esoteric rituals. We met the Rainbow family. We met Russians who followed the Sanatan Dharma, and it was just such a precious amalgamation of people that you know it, it just enthralls me to think about the Mahakumbh Mela and and what it did for me. Just just being there, shooting there, and you know just speaking to the Naga Babas, watching them run at, at Prayag Mahakum, it, it was one of the most, you know, enlightening, okay, I mean, it, I could say enlightening, but, you know, the word has been so uh, perverted that I don't quite know what to say. It, it was definitely one of the most precious moments of my life, the Kumbh Mela. And in that Mahakumbh Mela, I happened to come across someone who uh, I put his little interview in uh, a short video I made on the Nath Sampraday. And his name is Broom Nath Ahori. Okay. And it was not even me who spotted him. It was my partner who spotted him. And he said, and we're talking to very, very many people, 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 uh, Mercury is retrograde, but you know, you talk to very, very many people of uh, very many Sampradays and uh, this uh, Baba we knew was uh, from the Gorakhnathis, okay, and the Gorakhnathis are the Kanfatta segment and Kanfatta means, you know, uh, Sadhu Babas, not Sampraday Babas who wear the earring, the thick earring that was later on hijacked by alternate uh, culture and counterculture and people started to wear all that in the raves so that comes from the Nath Sampraday so incidentally my partner spotted Drumnath Akhuri Baba watch, walking and uh, he went to speak with him but Drumnath Baba disappeared so after that he came and he told me that you know uh, I saw this this person and he felt very familiar and he was obviously from the Gorakhnathi uh, segment of the Nath Sampraday with black clothes, a Ghori Baba, Vamachari. So I was like wow okay so I want to meet him you know because I as I said that I had met in Ganga Sagar Mela uh, that uh, the Nath Sampraday gurus in the Nath Sampradha Sathaks and that really really the story of Matsendra Nath, Gorakh Nath, it sort of enthralled me right. So I did want to you know get to know Broom Nath Baba and this time we didn't even know his name because it was just my partner who'd seen him. So uh, it, it felt so uh, awesome just to uh, one day come straight face to face with him and we just randomly asked him that would you like to do a small little interview for us to explain to us about Nath Sampraday. And uh, he was like, okay, I will. And then he got talking to me and he asked me my name. I said, um, Dina Mukherjee. And he was like, wow, you know, I'm also Mukherjee. So we got talking, we got talking and we discovered that he's also from West Bengal. He's a Bengali. 
and then we did that interview which is available uh, for you to see on my video that I made on the Nath Sampradaya, okay? And he, he goes in depth about uh, the Nath Sampradaya, what is sadhana, and, and very interesting uh, treatises he propounds out there. So do watch a video on Nath Sampradaya, okay? Nath Ghora. Now, uh, after that interaction with Rumnath Baba, I could not sleep. And I felt like my whole body was on fire. And I felt like a deep sense of just coming back home. Because, you know, I when I got talking to him, then we got talking and I got speaking. And it, it was just a lot of cathartic points for me, you know. And it felt very cathartic. And he felt like someone very, very close to me. Which is what I was just telling my partner that I think... I mean, I don't think I know that he's actually my guru. And uh, since then, since the interview, now uh, the video has had thousands of uh, views on YouTube. And I was actually in touch with Brumnath Baba because I had his mobile number. And uh, we were actually in touch. And this was 2010 Mahakum. So uh, we kept in touch through 2012 and after that, uh, interestingly, at the end of 2012, I got an opportunity to go and stay in uh, Kandala, Lunavla, which is very close to where I stay in Bombay, about two and a half hours away. So I went to stay there uh, and it, I got pregnant in 2013, but 2012, I was in Kandala and I came across a mandir, which was the mandir of one of the great Nathas or Kanif Nath. Okay, Kanif Nath is one of the great Nathas. And I used to live bang opposite Kanif Nath. Okay, incidentally, when I birthed my baby, I got to keep my placenta. And after a certain, you know, purification rituals and all of that, I buried my placenta right there. Uh, so, you know, because it, it just, it was just really, really precious. Uh, and uh, I buried my placenta, which, you know, was very, very symbolic uh, in that, that uh, area of Kanif Nath. And Kanif Nath is near a place called Bushi Dam. A lot of people know about this uh, zone, this place in Kandala. You can go there and have a look. So at Kanif Nath, I started to go and walk every single day and I would walk and walk and walk all around that it's a huge acres and acres of plot and in between all of this is the, the temple of Baba Kanif Nath and they say when it floods over there in the monsoon and it floods that the whole dam is flooded but Kanif Nath temple does not flood so it felt like a really, really a, a very precious place. And honest to God, it felt like a place I have lived in for many, many incarnations. I've worked there, I've lived there. And the hills are Sayadris all around the Kanif Nath place, all around. If you go and Google Sayadris, this, this mountain range is one of the oldest millions of years ago, something in the vicinity of 120 million years or something, Sayadri range. And believe me, a while living in Lunavla Kandala, me and my partner would go trekking a lot because that's one of my, our favorite activities. And we would regularly come across places in the Sayadri that felt like, you know, like I've been here before, I know this place, I've walked here before, and incidentally, so many times I would just take off my shoes and just walk through that, through those rocks, and I could connect so, so very deeply to those rocks, and I felt like I've, I've walked here before, I know this place, you know, and I would just walk around Kanif Nath, and I had already received my Diksha, I already knew my beach, so I would just go around and around, you know, a circumambulating uh, Kanif Nath, going round and round in circles, chanting my beach mantra, chanting my beach mantra, chanting my beach mantra. 
and uh, it, it was a very special amavasya that i got to stay there and uh, i did meet some very very powerful nath babas who come to do sadhana at the kanifnath temple now the point of all of this is brumnath aghori baba is definitely my spiritual guide just the way he uh, loved me at the mahakum just the way he accepted me just the way he knew me you know just the look in his eyes is was of recognition was was like you know and then he told me that i don't give interviews because he just doesn't anyway uh, he told me about ramnath aghori baba and then i got studying about ramnath aghori baba and it, everything made sense and uh, i used to get a dream a premonition if if i may say it was a premonition it felt like lucid dreams of a of a person with very you know very tall person talk with a dumru in his hand saying bam bam bole bam bam bole and then brumnath baba was telling me about ramnath aghori baba and he said that this is something you would do and he have a dumru and he was a very powerful mahayogi in fact ramnath baba was uh, taken to nepal as the rajguru and there's a very interesting thing about ramnath baba as well because uh, he, many believe that he is a reincarnation of gorakhnath or gorakhnath okay now many say that gorak gorakhnath uh, actually um, put a curse on the ancestor of the king of nepal okay and and that Curse sort of uh, took shape because the the prince, the crown prince, literally shot everyone dead in Nepal, and and Ramna Baba was noticing the the degradation of the spiritual vibe of the whole place in Nepal, and he had warned them that he had said many say that there was a sacred little door, okay, a door that was not to be opened because it had. kali energy it had uh, it was something hidden and the queen mother opened that door before all of this hell broke loose so ramnath baba had warned her against that and said don't do it don't do it anyway so back to ramnath baba that brumnath baba connected me to ramnath baba and i started meditating and i started to you know uh, research up on him and uh, I felt intensely very close to Ramnath Aghori Baba, and uh, interestingly, I also spoke to many people who have uh, taken diksha with him, his the place where he comes from, and all of that. And he is a very you know interesting person. Please watch my video on Ramnath Baba. Many more videos are coming up as well on Ramnath Baba uh, because he is one of my constant spiritual guides. And he, I was reconnected with him through Brumnath Baba. Uh, it was a, a really, really precious connection that happened. Now today, I want to talk about certain other things that uh, we spoke about, Brumnath Aghori and myself, and and all of these I have. again touched base with in my meditation in my channeling of ramnath aghori baba and every single time it, it, it leaves me breathless it leaves me speechless because in this lifetime i have not uh, become a nath panthi i have not taken the path of nath sampraday because you know i don't wear that black thing i don't uh, do conventional aghor sadhana although i have done sadhana in crematoriums not on a corpse as yet but i have done uh, uh, very many different types of sadhana in crematoriums in abandoned places so now uh, i want to get to certain conversations i had even last day i made a video about this very thing now kali what is kali kali kala kala time saturn saturn is the consort of kali kali is everything the visible and the invisible okay uh, if you look at the bengali devotional songs of um, ram prasad for instance 
then a lot of kali treatises is uh, you know can be extrapolated from those songs because a lot of the kali trees treatises has been added to that right to those songs so kali is the visible and the invisible tumi arupo sharupo shaguno nirguno dayal bhayal hori hai now hori and kali again i explained to you the very closeness between kali and krishna kali's beej is cream and krishna's beej is clean so krishna and kali are actually two sides of the same coin both are as dark as as the clouds the rain clouds krishna and kali okay very very interesting but this video is not expounding to you about krishna and kali i've already written and said a lot about this and if you feel so inclined i will speak more about this but kali is everything everything what you can see what you cannot see now very many people have told me that you know you hindus you people who follow the sanatan dharma you worship 33 crore gods to that i say no we don't we worship consciousness and we know that consciousness exists in everything okay consciousness is is inevitable in life everything has consciousness forget animals things like metal have consciousness things like crystals are actually alive so uh, i mean uh, jc bose jagadish chandra bose who received a nobel prize actually already with with a machine called crescograph showed that everything has consciousness different varying degrees of consciousness so hindus don't worship 33 crore gods they worship consciousness okay this is the 33 crore is very interesting because it it's all about nadis and um energy vortices so which is not again uh, the topic of this video so kali is the multiverse kali shakti kali is mula prakriti kali is parama prakriti parama prakriti right uh, shiva is passive the masculine is passive it may sound ridiculous like how can the masculine be passive we see the masculine as mars with the upward going you know uh, aggressive but essentially uh, in nature in parama prakriti now nature again is not exactly you cannot translate parama prakriti as nature okay uh, like i said a lot of things a lot of meanings are lost in translation so shiva is passive shiva is shava lying on the feet of kali that's why in yoga you do shavasan which takes you to to that quintessential primeval state of consciousness from which you may create all possibilities if you do shavasan correctly you will resurrect resurrect like the phoenix okay because then your kundalini will awaken if you know how to do shavasan correctly now the navamundi in my navamundi writings i've also explained to you the true meaning of shavasan okay what is the panchamundi what is the navamundi and what the yogi and the mahayogi must do to achieve the perfect state of shavasan for that is what shiva is doing he's by no way uh, by no means a dead body that's that's a wrong interpretation so uh, shiva is passive shakti is active she is manifestation right and and manifestation or reality occurs with a friction of masculine feminine shiva shakti Sh uh, but remember shakti or kali is prime the feminine is prime that's why this is the milky way and we come from the womb of our mothers right uh shiva is shava but not a dead body shava has a deep esoteric meaning so uh, brumnath baba was telling me that uh, tantric stake kali as the bride like i explained to you in my last video uh 
honestly people who look at Kali as the mother they are not Virachara Tantrics and Tantra may not be the path for them you know Vedic Puja part may be the path for them they are not Bhairavs for Bhairavs consider Kali as the lover the bride the wife okay so as Mary Magdalene would take Esua as the lover this is the same this is a Virachara Tantric Padhyati or way okay uh, but how do you take Kali as your wife I mean is that even possible I would ask uh, Brumnath Baba and to that he said that there are three types of disciples Uttam, Muttam or Adham Uttam, Madhyam or Adham okay Uttam is uh, superior Madhyam is mediocre Adham is uh, substandard okay but again meanings lost in translation uh, like when you say uh, the Thomas uh, is Shiva what do you understand by that it's it's not what you understand Thomas normally and, and you put that uh, signification to Shiva it, it again needs deeper introspection you must understand that now there are also three types of Tantra Divya Char, Veera Char and Pasha Char so Pashachar is again um, uh, not what uh, Nath Sampradaya mostly do and definitely not Ramnath Baba. Ramnath Baba was a Virachari. Okay, he does. He did know about Pashachar. He did know about Vital Gyan. In fact, he's one of the only people with very good uh, knowledge in Vital Gyan. So basically, uh, this is very clear. My grandfather said this, Brumnath Baba said this, every single Mahat Bhairav I have spoken to has said this, that in Tantra all human beings are Pashus. Pashu is animals, okay? And that is why Shiva is Pashupati Nath. In Nepal, Shiva is known as Pashupati Nath because he is the, the father of all animals because you're operating from the ego right now the difference between vedic uh, puja kriya and tantric puja kriya the first thing that you need to know that in the vedic puja uh, and kriya all the non-vedic people women subalterns low caste people foreigners are excluded you cannot even enter a temple to give your ablutions, your prostrations, your uh, offerings. So in Tantra, everybody has a right to get Diksha and continue Sadhana. You can be from anywhere, you can be anyone, okay? Now, uh, and, and who is, who is, uh, who has given us Tantra but Shiva? That's why there is no one with a new divine masculine archetype with a heart as great as Shiva. Honestly, everybody does Shiva Tantra. With whether you know it or not, the divine masculine is Shiva. And there is not an archetype who has more of a heart than Shiva, okay? He has the largest heart. He does not discriminate. He allows everyone entry. And that is why he's Udar, he's Mahadeva, okay? Now, also another thing that I, I asked Brumnath Baba, that I asked Ramnath Baba as well, and in my channelings, in my meditations, they tell me, that I asked them that why bhoga? Why must we, why can't we become ascetics? At a point, I was seriously considering on, uh, you know, just becoming an ascetic, a sannyasi. So, uh, Vrumnath Baba said, as well as my dad, as well as Tunu Baba, who happens to be someone who has given me, um, who gave me one of my uh, first mantras, my grandmother being my first guru, who gave me my Kriya Mantra at five. But uh, they all say the same thing. They say that without Bhoga, there is no Tyaga. Bhog is experience. Tyag is renunciation. Without experience, there is no renunciation. For we come back into this reality time and again in a cyclical manner to experience, right? And uh, that is why Shiva propounds the, the treatise of Madhya, Mangsho, 
mocho mudra moitu okay so madhya is alcohol again there are deeper symbolic nuances to this i've already written an article check that out please mangshu is meat mocho is fish mudra and methun is divine union or sexual copulation so people basically in the world are immersed in their five senses how venus is the five pen, uh, five petal pentagram i've already explained that we are all immersed in our five senses okay so why not make use of these five senses to receive receive enlightenment to reach self actualization why not that's what tantra is all about right so why not make all of this a part uh, a path to the spiritual a part of your spiritual practice right uh, the all of these can become the pathway to finding liberation right uh, my grandfather would say this is direct quote paspadto bhavitu jiba pasmukto sadashi so if you have that the pash or the new surround you you are uh, an animal once you re get relieved of that noose by self enlightenment you become sadashiv we are all actually a part of uh, we are all actually sadashivs okay and we will all create our own manvantaras but let's not uh, uh, hop to that topic just yet so uh, and to become pashmukta or free tantra is the only way in the new kali yug okay vedic uh, up up upayas vedic kriyas is not going to give you enlightenment right now it's only through tantra that you will receive enlightenment okay what are the things that keep us tied up what are the things that make us pashus shame aversion hunger thirst sleep fear anger lust we are so distracted by all of this that we can barely sit down for you know even 20 minutes a day and uh, do sadhana which is why we cannot express our true, poten true potential true potential true potential too dualistic these are the bonds these are the nooses that are keeping us tied up pash pash bandha that's why okay this is what keeps us in servitude of the flesh coming back again and again take fear for example brumnath baba said that if you're afraid go on a new moon or an amavasya in a crematorium sit atop a shava or a dead body and do sadhana you will get over your fear right you will similarly take last okay if you use the sexual excitement okay to enter into a meditative state then and and you can do this uh, as you're entering also while in copulation stark naked use that the sexual excitement to awaken parts of you that were dormant do it consciously is the first step if you ask me okay all this is very difficult to follow what is the first step become conscious right right so uh, this is the same way you handle all of this hunger eat till you can eat no more or just abstain from eating too much balance okay now uh as as i said that sit on a shav a shav or a dead body do kriya you get over fear if you're really afraid on a new moon when there's no light so similarly you must uh you know target each bond each of the bonds that is keeping you tied up it's a ginormous uh, mothy moth uh, mothman prophecies but honestly we have tantra releases us from these bondages and that is uh, what is so special remember ultimately brahma gyan uh, the knowledge of Brahm, brahman is the ultimate uh, aim so stay blessed do not get caught up in the news seek freedom through bhoga may you reach tyaga hands give healing so it, it's one way you will see many many people give healing 
So before I end, on this very, very auspicious day, uh, Mars is almost at the midpoint. In a few hours, he will be sending you much love. And I end with a mantra of Shiva. And this is a Rudraksha, Mala, which is very, very powerful to do Shiva Japa. Om Jumsa, Om Jumsa, Om Jumsa, Om Jumsa, Om Jumsa. I told you, uh, one Shiva beach is Jum. Om Jumsa. Om Jum Sa to invoke Shiva as a divine masculine. You may say Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. Feel it. Feel the mantra. Feel the beach. Om Jum Sa. Om Jum Sa. I end right now. I'll be doing very many videos because we are approaching Navratri. I shall be fasting for nine days doing non-stop kriyas for people, my clients, havans at home. If you want to be a part of the pujas and the havans, kindly let me know. If you want to donate something, it be very much appreciated. Uh, do let me know your thoughts. Do you like me doing such videos? Do you want more? If yes, I would love to do more for you and a lot more astrology coming up, of course. I'm never going to give that up and syncretizing all the traditions that's what i do so om jum sa 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 bye